Hello, this is Marianne Penna coming to you from SeemsToBeSo.com. I'm not going to promise you that today's video is going to be short because it is going to be kind of long, but it covers the basics of how to um, make a layout in electric quilt. Tomorrow I'll do one um, when you don't have electric quilt. So um, I just wanted to show you, um, I've got to cough, I'm sorry. Okay, I hope I'm back. Okay, um, I wanted to cover uh, how to do this with photos because sometimes when you're putting layouts together, especially when it comes to rows in particular, you can't, you don't always have them drawn in electric quilt or redrawing them would be next to impossible if the person who created the row didn't make a row long project or a, a quilt block. So um, I'm going to try to show you all those little differences today. So let's get on with the tutorial. Last year when we did EQ Seasons, Heidi at Electric Quilt did a really great tutorial on how to put the rows together using the custom, or not the custom layout, but I think it was the horizontal layout. And it was it really turned me on to how you could work different layouts with that with just that layout and how you could get sashing included and um, putting little border strips and that kind of thing and this was a really big thing for me to learn about electrical I absolutely love this tutorial and I I'll put the I'll highlight this URL so that you'll be able to see it for yourself because it really is a great tutorial. Now she had the PJ7 files to work with last year so she used all of the rows that were in the PJ7 files and that really works out but like I said when you don't have those what do you do? So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'll be right back. Okay so this is what I created using basically just pictures of the rows and border stripes and panels. And this is the look that I put together with just the rows that have been offered during the Road Home Row Along. So I want to show you how I did this. I'm going to show you why I think um, the PJ7 files don't work. This is the difference. Now I'm not putting down anybody's rows because I love all of the rows. And I asked the, the ladies, the bloggers, the de designers for their PJ7 files thinking that I would do a video version of Heidi's tutorial. But I had forgotten about how PJ7 files don't always have the ability to bring in the, the, the quilt row when they put when you put your blocks together, like you see here, these are all blocks for for um, Barbara Deegis's row. And um, you, when you go into the quilt workout sheet, you would put these together into a row that gives you your layout, which is great. And that's how I normally do things myself. But here we have Dion Stott's row. And you can see hers, she built her row in the quilt block worksheet in a complete row. And that's how I also did mine when I did my row this year. I did it in a complete row because I was working with both pieced and applique. And I was working a scene. With a scene, you literally need to do it in the size that you want your row to be. So it's better to go that way. When you have separated blocks that you can block out, it's better to do it this way. And so it just depends on what you're doing as far as your design goes. When it's all applique, it's better to do it as all one project. So it's just it's just dependent on what what you're doing. Okay, so I wanted to show you why I went with the pictures idea. So I took and I imported all of the row pictures from the Road Home Row Along. I 
also imported some panels. You can see um, I have them labeled. When I buy fabric or I download pictures of fabric like the, this, the name of the, the file name of the picture is what is imported into Electric Quilt, which is a really cool thing because as you can see here, it gives it its name and it's not something odd. So if your name, if the file name is odd, like ILX222 or, or in eBay's case, it would be like S1100 or if you went for the larger picture, it'd be S-1600. That's what it would show here. And so unless you rename the image before you bring it into Electric Quilt, it's going to show whatever the file name of the JPG is. So you may want to take prior to importing your pictures into Electric Quilt, you may want to take and edit them down, like take off any frames or borders or rulers or you know that kind of thing. Give it a file name you know, like when like say when I buy fabric, I rename it to what the fabric is, I put the brand on it, I normally put how much I bought of it and how much I paid and um, so sometimes even when I've made a fabric chart I've had to go in and edit the name because it will show all that and I don't necessarily want people to know how much I bought or how much I paid for it so I try to be a little bit better about that but I try to use fabrics that I own versus fabrics that Electric Quilt has given me because that makes it easier for me to actually use the fabrics that I own versus fabrics I may have to look for. So um, it's a good habit to get into to when, when you buy a fabric, add it to Electric Quilt, whether you add it as a photo or as fabrics itself. Now the difference between adding <clears throat> a photo versus your actual fabric is that panels, um, well, whenever you add fabrics into the photo layout, they will not tile and this is what I really love because when you don't want a fabric to tile you you want to add it as a photo and um, yes you can copy it to fabrics but when it becomes goes over to fabrics it's going to tile when you put it into a block and if you don't want a panel to tile you you then want to keep it as a fabric and yes you might have to add it several times to get what you want but you're at least getting what you want and I will show you that difference also but as you can see I've added all my rows and at the very end here I have some additional panels that I added I don't have any border stripes in here because I did manage to get all the border stripes to work for me but I did come close to adding some border stripes let me bring up my border stripes folder that I had Okay, this is my border stripes folder, and as I, let's see, I'm hoping you can see it here. And as you can see here, you can kind of, I have a little preview window that you can kind of see in my Explorer. This comes as part of um, <coughs> this file manager that I use called Dopus. Uh, directory Opus is what it's actually called. and. As you can see here, you can see the different border strips I, I caught. I thought this one would be great for Carla Hinton's um, row. Wouldn't this be great surrounded by her, hers? And I took and I, I edited down and cropped out some of the border so that when I add it in here, I'd be able to surround it with these great pictures. I just think that'd be awesome. And I have some others, you know, like here's one. If I had imported this, it would import it with this file name. So that's why you would want to have the proper file name, you know, so that you're getting what you need. Now with this one, because of this weird thing here in the border here, or the ruler here, I had to take and I had to edit this with in um, Corel Draw. I used the perspective tool and I'm sure most graphic programs have something like this where you take and you you put it in, you put it on and you are what you're trying to do is to get the, the fabric either to lay straight up like when a fabric looks like it's laying down 
um, and you want it to come forward so it looks straight up, this is what the tool that you would use. It will also help with things like that curvature where it'll help it bring up the other part so it's not so flat and you can crop a straighter line that way. I like the perspective tool for those reasons and I, while I don't use it a lot, it does get some use. Um, as you can see here, this is where I use the perspective tool and this looks a lot better than it does here where I don't have that fold going down and that's because I use the perspective tool. Okay, and as you can see, here's just some other prints that I use. These are eBay prints. So I just wanted to show you basic ideas of border strips. Border strips are really great for places in here. Like this here is a border strip. This one here is a border strip. We'll come down here. As you can see, there's that one I told you about where I use the perspective tool. This is just really teeny tiny. It's it's only set as a two inch border. So it's just really teeny tiny. Here's another one where I've used the uh, uh, border strip. And as you can see, it does extend over, but I'm not concerned about that. For me, I was just trying to build a layout that I like that would work well with this year's rose and this is something I came up with so let me show you how I did this now <clears throat> when you import photos as a fabric or I'm sorry when you import photos you want to go to your libraries your photo library and you bring up your window for that it doesn't really matter what library you're in you're going to come down here to the import window you're going to come to from image files and let's import Carla's border or Carla's row okay so we have here Carla's row now I could import one row or I could import 30 rows it wouldn't matter you just press your shift key or your alt key and click many times like if I click my alt key I can pick which ones I want if I use my shift key I can click them all click Control A will select all with the shift key. I can just do a certain number. So it, it's up to you on what you want to do in that respect. Okay, so now that I have that um, Carla's in here, I now want to come to copy and I want to bring that into my library. Okay, and I'm going to paste it. And it's going to come and it's going to paste right here at the end of everything else that's already here. It will always do that. If there's a duplicate in here already, it will tell me that this is a duplicate. Do I really want to import it? If the DPI is too high, it will also tell me that the DPI is over 150 DPI. Do I really want to import it? I always say yes. So that's just me. And so um, because it's going to be part of this P7E file, unless I add it to my my um, library and that's what I am going to do I'm now going to add it well it is in my library I'm now going to save my library then I'm going to add it to sketchbook and as you can see here it's come over to the photo library and it's right here at the end where I have added it now if you don't have this tool the set photo tool on, let me move, scooch this over a little bit so you can kind of see it. If you don't have the set photo tool, you may have to add it on your window. And I'm going to bring my window over here so that you can see. Add or remove buttons. And it wants to be crazy on me today. I'm trying to get the menu so it shows up for you. It still wants to be crazy. I'm going to have to scooch it over a little bit more. And you're not going to be able to see it there, but I think you can see it now. So here you can see the tools that you can add to your sidebar. And when your window is this small that I need for the video, there's no way I can get around this. I just have to kind of deal with it in this respect. So now I have to figure out how to get this back in my 
So I'm just going to leave this be for now. <clears throat> so if I want to add a button or remove a button, oops. If I want to add or remove a button, I can take and I can uncheck it. And as you can see, that button has disappeared. If I want to add it, it will just come back. And where did it go? Okay, good. So it should be here somewhere. Right here, set photo button. Okay, so let me get rid of all these little menus that have cropped up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are gonna be working with our set photo tool. So it's important that you have this tool on your sidebar so that you can work with it. Next thing we want to do is we want to go to quilt layout. And as you can see here, this is my quilt layout for this quilt. It is the horizontal strip layout. And I'm going to quickly show you how you get that. You go to um, quilt, new quilt, horizontal strip quilt. And you just click it. And this is what you get when you first bring it up. Now, this is something you kind of need to plan out. <clears throat> when I drew mine, I just kind of drew it, but I want to show you what happens when you just work with your basic layout and you go back and forth trying to add to it. So let's go ahead and start with this one. This one is 30 by 50. The width is 10, which means our height needs to be 10. We need to change this to 12 because all of our rows in the road home are 12 inches. But the lengths are different. Like some lengths are 40 inches, some lengths are 30. So most of the lengths, I think, are 40. But we have one of them that's just 24. So we have some, um, we have one that's 36. So we have all kinds of different lengths. And that's why I wanted to show you this tutorial this year based on the different lengths and why that works for us. So we're gonna, we're gonna, um, make this 40 also okay and just kind of work with that we're going to work with a plain row for right now we have five strips that's these and as you see you can sit here and highlight each one of these this is one of the great benefits about this row is that you can take and um, make these different heights I want all of these but like if you wanted to add a sash sashing <clears throat> or a piece of strip along here you could then take and reduce this to let's say six inches and then you would add just a six inch wide border stripe or if it's a four inch wide border stripe you'd change this to four just as long as you're keeping your length all the same <coughs> so this is the cool part about this quilt layout is that each row is different and you can set it differently so that's what i I'm just gonna I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do this right now so let's go ahead and see what happens when we set our photos to our layouts this is Alita's row I'm not so concerned about borders right now for instance but um, you know it's something we'll worry about later this is Carol's row as you can see, these fit right in here really nicely because they're already set up to do so. But what if they didn't make their rows at 12 by 36 or 12 by 40? What if they made their rows at, um, let's see, um, I don't know if my map will come in here or not. It does, but mine is only a 30 inch row. So that would not be right because then it's, it's, it's not a correct size from your PDF. So this is where you want to, I'm on layout one right now and I really don't want to be on this layout because I want to be able to resize my rows and that's where I want to be on layer two and I, I didn't put that in my head before so I apologize for not making that clear. But you get to see at least how layer one worked because when we add our border stripes we have to go over to layer one because they're set as fabric. Okay, so here's mine. And 
I don't know why mine doesn't fit in here. No, that's weird. But this is how they appear. They should appear. They shouldn't just automatically resize like they do when you add them on layer one. On layer two, they just show as the size they are in the sketchbook. And this is where you get to resize them to what they should be. So, um, but mine for some reason does not do that. I haven't figured out why. So I'm just showing you some of them might not work. And that one doesn't work either. How strange, isn't that weird? And here's Barbara's. Barbara's is a 36 inch wide row. So what we want to do here now is we want to come up here to our adjust tool and we want to size these up. And <coughs> we know hers is a 12 by 36 inch row, oops, 12 and 36. And then we'll bring it in here. And I'm thinking this is probably set to 10. So we're going to want to resize this. This one we will do in 40 by 12. And that must not be sized right either. This is 40 by 12. And the way I, I know this just because I've worked with the rows enough already to know these sizes. But um, the way I, if you have to look up a row size, the best way to do it is to go into the PDFs that you downloaded. This is Helene's row. So I'd want to look at her PDF and see what she says it should be. So let, let's look for a, a size for the row. I'll be right back. I'm looking. Okay, Helene's is not the best one for me to choose, but hers is in metric. And um, I'm going to guess that hers come out at um, 12 inches high. But each of her blocks, she says that you have to stack them twice. So this one is going to be 6 inches. This one's going to be 6 inches. And they're probably 12 inches wide. I'm not real sure. Because I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Helene, I don't do metrics. So I would go to Google and convert all this for myself. <laughs> so that would be me. But um, let me show you a different row. In Janine's PDF, she shows hers at 12 by 40. So her row is 12 by 40. So that's how you can find most of the rows the PDF should have the row size at the very least so that you can resize your images to what you need. So I'm going to go ahead and put Helene's at 12 by 36 so that I can have some variance and show you what's going on here with this layout. So we're going to come in here and we're going to fix these two. So we want to come back to layout and we want to come down to this row. We see that this is 10 inches so we want to fix this and we want to fix this one to 12. Now we come back here to layer 2 and you can see that they haven't done much but when we come here they're still oversized and that's because Electric Quill automatically resizes whether it's a block or a row or whatever it is it also resizes the image whenever you resize any of these. So <laughs> This is why pre-planning is better than if you had not if you hadn't pre-planned because if you just start laying your rows in here and then go and start adding your sashings and such, you're going to constantly be resizing every single one of these to the size they need to be. So that's why it's better to just try and take and I'm highlighting and using my delete key on my keyboard to delete them. 
that's why it's better to try and plan out what you want to do first. So like if you want your layout to be here at a border, say, let's go with six inches, then we'll make this a, a 12 inch row again. And we'll go with another six inch row again. And we'll add, um, we'll make this, this is 12. We can add a board, we can add another one. We can make it a 12 or we can make it a four inch, <clears throat> whatever size you want. If you know what your border stripes are gonna be ahead of time, you already know from the sizes that you want. You could have drawn it out on paper and then to see what it looks like all put together and you then add your rows. So as you can see, when you add your rows, you're using your photo tool to add your rows. And let's see here. I have less 12 intros this time. So let's see. This one is 12 by 40. So we'll just fit this in here. And then we'll do the same here. Well, that's not good. We don't want, we didn't get that one edited, I guess. So that's where I'm saying you need to edit your pictures first so you've got everything working the way you want it when you set it in here. So use something else that's different until you do. Oh, let's try something a little different here. And we're just going to do And let's make this one just a little bit different. Let's do 36 by 12. Now, as you can see, I didn't edit this one either. It's got a frame around the row, and that's okay. There's, there's no big deal with that. Now, let's talk about adding some border strips and maybe some panels. <clears throat> when you have that kind of thing, you want to with your panels, you want to add them as I keep going this way and I don't even need that. Um, you keep, you want to add your panels as, as um, photos because you, you're wanting to keep the range of your panel in the size that you want it. I'm going to have to make this a little bit wider. I'll be right back. I'm going to resize it in that so it's all ready. Okay, so I have resized this so it's a little bit wider so that I can show you how to work the panels and such and add the border stripes. So with panels, <clears throat> what I did is I took and I put the rows in here. As you can see, it's still 12 by 40, but we have a 60 inch wide quilt. The same goes here. It's still 12 by 40, but it's 60 inches. I just flip-flopped one of the rows is on this side of the quilt and the other is on this side, and then I put this one which is smaller, 12 by 36, over here. And I've done this on purpose because let's say I had a 12 by 30 row. If I could fit my row in here, I would put it, I could put it right up next to it. And it would be fine because they, the two fit well. But I can't put my row in here for some reason. So um, let's try something here. Maybe we'll add a plain block. and see if we can't get it to work. We'll go with uh, 3D and 12. Oh, I guess that's not going to work real well. But we could do that and see if that will work. Habit. Nope, still doesn't work, but that will make it work. 
So it will work on a plain block if I give it a background, but it won't work just by itself for some reason, which I guess I'm not understanding, and maybe uh, I don't really know for sure why it will or will not work. So anyway, that will work, but I'm not really after adding my own. What I want to do here is I want to show you how to add um, little pieces of border and that kind of thing. So I did add a, a plain block, and you can get one of those by right-clicking on your sketchbook box window and then going to Add Plain Block. And when you click on it, it will give you a plain block to add. Once you color it, it becomes that color. So this is what I did with these. I took these and I, I made them 12 inches high, and then I added, I made them 2 inches. Oops. So that I could have just a teeny little bit of sashing between them. And then I copied and pasted. And I brought this one down here. Then you can just paste again. You don't have to copy and paste again when you're on the same kind of deal. And I want to get it hidden. I don't like the white showing a lot. And there I have my three sashings. So it's pretty easy now for me to add a panel in here. When I add a panel, I need to know what, I, what sizes I have here. I have 40 and I have 2 inches. So 42. I have a width of 60, so I need an 18 inch piece to come in here. Now I could do 18 by 12. But I could also do 18 plus the 6 border and just make this border come in through here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. With the panel, I'm going to take and I'm going to, well, if I just do this, if I come in here and I just add him here, as you can see, he'll fit in here fine with the layer 1, but he's stretched out. And he's stretching the whole border. If I move this, I'll show you what I mean. See, he's stretching the whole row. And that's not what we want. So that's why you have to be careful about getting on those layers. And you want to be sure you delete him because he'll show up bigger on your fabric chart if you go to make a fabric chart later on. So you want to be sure you delete it off. <clears throat> you go to your photo and you bring it over here and that's how you know the difference between the layers is layer one stretches layer two doesn't and we need him to be at least 18 inches if I remember right he's got to be 12 inches high then we can just scooch him into place but what if we wanted to make him taller and what if the panel is taller then you would just bring it into the size that you need. Let's say it's an 18 by 18 panel. This is a, a Northcott print that's coming out in November. <coughs> so I don't know what the size is, but um, I love I love the print of the leopard in the jungle. It's just kind of fun. It would be great on Janine's row as an extra, you know, because of it being a leopard and all. But um, I like the tigers also. So anyway, this is how you you would do that. Then you would just know that when you're cutting your border stripe, you only have to cut a border stripe. That is, this size plus this size. You would sew these two together and then sew your panel on. And so that's pretty cool. So let's try adding a border stripe. Now with border stripes, you have to use layer one. You can use layer two, but it works differently. And you have to use a plain block to get the layer to show up. So we're going to come over here to our fabrics. And again, I imported um, border stripes like I do when you order, when you import photos. It's the same process except that you go to your fabric library and you go to import, you choose your image files. That's where I chose my borders. I chose the ones that I edited already and I added them and then I brought them into my sketchbook and I added them to my sketchbook. Like I showed you earlier in the video with photos, it's the same process 
they're just different libraries. Okay, so let's take one of our, our border stripes and add it. Now it is under here also, it's under the line because we're on a different layer, but it's tiled it out like it should. And that's, and that's what we wanted it to do. Now I didn't make thin borders, so I would just come maybe down here and add these, or I could come here and add this one. Why that's not adding, I don't know. And this is where you want to have your borders at the smaller sizes because as you can see it's tiled here twice and so you get wider trees than what you really want. But I don't want to resize all of these again so I'm just going to leave this be. If I take and I do a, a larger border, I have a, a, a pretty nice one in here that's good. Oh, I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the one where I need a three inch border. So. As you can see, just by working with the different sizes and your panels and your border stripes, you can fill in your spots rather nicely. And that's what I did here. And while it may take a little bit of time and patience, you can get it done and you can get a, you can use panels and borders stripes in a really nice way to enhance your quilt. I really love how this turned out. I wish I owned all these fabrics, but I don't. And this is how it is before I added the side. Now, if you'd like to know how to do the side border, I'll quickly show you how to do that and then I'll close this video off. This is where we would come and we want to get fancy with borders. When you add a border, it's not going to affect your sizes in here. But um, if let's say you don't want the top or the side borders or even the bottom border. That's where you could come and um, just kind of play with these numbers. Take these to a zero. Just want a right border? Leave the right border in place and give it a size that you want. I made, I made my first one a one inch. Then I added another one and I made the second one 12. And I still have nothing going here. And when I did the last border, I then added one more border and they all have one inches going around because I wanted it to incorporate the black but I didn't want to um, have it be there all three times that just would look strange so here we go three And this is where you could add vertical rows. Set photo tool. See, I would add here. Oops, layer two. And then I want Patty's row, which is over here. And then this is where I would just resize them. 12 by 40. Now, this is not tall enough for me to add this one, so I'd get rid of this. And I would just add something else that would fit into there. So that's, you know, that's just basically how I got this to work for me. I hope you'll try this and see how you feel about it. I hope it works for you too. And I'd love to see what you come up with, even if you just send me a screenshot of what you did and what you tried. You can download all of the row images off of the posts from the Road Home Row Along. And um, you just right click, save image as. That will usually do it. Or you can open the link and get the larger image. I go for the larger images. But um, <clears throat> sometimes you, can, you're not, you don't get that lucky because not everybody links to their images. So just try to get whatever image size you can. I encourage you to try this. Download some border stripes from Northcott, Wilmington Fabrics, Wyndham Fabrics has them, or you know, go to eBay and look up border stripes and panels and pick some you like and just give them a try. Edit them up, crop them out, you know, and just play and have some fun. I'll see you tomorrow for a tutorial on what you do when you don't have electric quilt. Bye bye for now.